What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafty Workshop video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to build this modern Adirondack chair. Now, I built this out of Cypress since I had some left over from a previous project, but I designed this to work with standard big box store pine. Uh, you could probably use pressure treated for this, or you could use just regular pine if you're going to paint it or use an outdoor finish on it. I personally do not really like working with pressure treated lumber. But I do have plans available for this if you guys are interested in building one of these for yourself. Uh, those are in the video description below. But this was a fairly simple project. There's a few more advanced techniques, like I used some half laps to join this back kind of leg section here. I used some dados to kind of drop in these slats, but a lot of these are optional. So you can kind of scale the difficulty of the project to fit your skill levels as a woodworker. So uh, really happy with the way it turned out. Let's go ahead and get started with the build. As I mentioned in the intro, I built a pair of these chairs out of some cypress I had left over from a previous project. Now, if you'd like to build one of these chairs out of dimensional lumber, you'll need the following. Three one by four by eights, one one by six by 12, and one one by eight by 10. I'd recommend getting treated lumber unless you plan on using an outdoor finish, such as paint or a clear finish. Since my cypress was rough, I needed to mill all the pieces before cutting the pieces to final size. I started with the seat slats since they were the simplest to cut. There are 10 slats per chair and they're three and a half inches wide. I rough cut the slats on the miter saw and table saw, and then flattened one face and one edge on the jointer. With one face flat, I brought the other face parallel using the planer. Finally, I cut all the pieces to their final length at the miter saw. After finishing the seat slats, I moved on to the tapered pieces, which included the front legs, the sides, the armrests, and the back legs. Basically all the pieces on the chair have a taper besides the seat slats. It's best to roughly lay out the pieces on your board before cutting so you don't end up with a bunch of wasted lumber, as most of these pieces can be nested together to reduce waste. I cut the tapers to rough size on my bandsaw, but you could also use a jigsaw if you don't have a bandsaw. I made sure to lay the pieces out with plenty of extra material so they could be cut to final size on the table saw later. After rough cutting the tapered pieces to size, I needed to flatten the pieces on my jointer and planer before moving on to the next step. And since I'll be using a tapering jig on the table saw to cut the final tapers, it was extremely important to have a good flat reference surface and square edge on each piece. The final step before moving on to the tapering jig was to cut each of the tapered pieces to their final length of the miter saw. Since the tapering jig references off of the end of the piece, the lengths need to be cut beforehand. All the lengths are listed in the plans, which again are available on my website, and there's a link in the video description below. For the final tapering of the pieces, I used the Rockler tapering jig. It was extremely simple to use. There are inch scales at the front and back of the jig, which can be used to set the taper based on the final measurement you want on the piece. And I really prefer to lay out my tapers this way rather than trying to figure out the exact angle. Once the taper was set on the jig, I clamped my workpiece with the narrow end towards the back of the jig and then pushed it through the miter slot on my table saw. This jig references off your miter slot and the edge of the jig is a zero clearance edge, so you get a really clean cut with no tear out. And while I'm tapering, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. I used a ton of Rockler products during this build, including their tapering jig, HVLP sprayer, and ever trusty glue brush. I'll have links to all the items I used in the video description below. Rockler's got tons of great tools and accessories for your next build, and they're always coming up with new and innovative ideas to help make your woodworking more efficient and more enjoyable. Thanks again to Rockler for sponsoring this build. I just continued cutting the tapers, adjusting the jig to match the taper on the different pieces until all the tapers were cut to the final size. I decided to use half laps to join the sides of the chair, so to start the half laps, I set up my miter gauge at a 10 degree angle to match the taper on the back of the legs. I also set up a stop block on the miter gauge so that all the cuts matched up, and then cut the shoulder line. And it's important to reference off the square edge on this step, not the tapered edge. Next, while I still had the regular blade installed, I cut the shoulder lines for all the dados for the seat slats. Each slat is recessed into the sides about a half an inch, which makes the chair stronger and also gives it a nice look. This really is optional though, as the glue and screws will provide more than enough strength. So if you don't feel comfortable with dados, you can totally skip this step. Before cutting the shoulders for the dados, I taped the four pieces that make up the sides of each chair together so that all the dados matched up perfectly. Each slat is placed three quarters of an inch apart, so I made sure to double check each time so that I adjusted the fence properly to account for the curve of the blade. 
I still managed to mess this up once, but it didn't really make much of a difference in the end. After cutting all the shoulder lines, I swapped over to a dado stack to clear out the waist. After a quick test fit, I just continued clearing out the waist using the dado stack until everything was nice and clean. Once that was done, I separated all the pieces and used the miter gauge again, still set at 10 degrees, to remove the waist from the half lap area. So the depth is really important here as you want the pieces to be flush when they're joined together. So make sure you to set that accurately. I also did a quick test fit before finishing the rest of the pieces. Next, I glued together the side pieces, applying plenty of glue and clamping pressure. I did use Tight Bond 3 on this project since this piece will see direct sunlight and won't be protected from the elements in any way. While the sides dried, I worked on joining the armrest to the front leg. These pieces are connected using pocket screws and I started by drilling pocket holes in the top of the front leg. Next, I added pocket holes to the back end of the armrest. These holes will be used to attach the back of the armrest to the sides of the chair. To attach the front leg to the armrest, I clamped the pieces in the wagon vise on my workbench and then used some inch and a quarter screws to join them together. While the pocket screws added quite a bit of strength, I still felt like these joints needed a little bit more support, so I cut some angled supports from a few pieces of scrap. I cut these on the bandsaw, but again, you could use a number of other tools for this task, including the miter saw. I cleaned up the pieces on my oscillating belt sander and was reminded of one of the things I hate most about Cypress, it gums up sandpaper like crazy. If you don't own one of these crepe sticks, I highly recommend them for cleaning gummed up sandpaper. I'll have a link to this one in the video description below. I added some pocket holes to the support blocks and then attached them to the underside of the armrest. Before adding the seat slats to the sides, I sanded them thoroughly using 80 and 120 grit sandpaper. I made sure all the half laps were perfectly flush and removed any glue squeeze out. Now onto the glue up. I initially wanted to avoid using screws to attach the seat slats, which is why I cut the dados to begin with, but unfortunately trying to clamp these slats in place proved to be extremely difficult. The pieces just kept sliding around and I ended up with gaps, especially since the clamps were trying to clamp on an angled surface. I ended up giving up and just added screws anyway. Luckily, I think the screws I picked looked pretty nice and I made sure to space them evenly so they look more clean. Now, if you don't want any screws showing, you could always just countersink them and plug the holes with something like a dowel. The last piece to add to the center part of the chair were these end caps, and they just give the chair a cleaner look and are attached using pocket screws. Next, it was time to attach the leg assemblies to the center assembly. I measured down from the top and front of the chair and added the pocket screws in the back of the armrest. I loosened them slightly and then added some glue between the front leg and side, and then drove the pocket screws home. On the inside of the sides, I drove screws through into the front leg. The glue really does most of the work here, but the screws won't be seen and held the pieces in place while the glue dried. For the back legs, I just kind of came up with something that worked with the pieces I had left. The chair didn't really need much lift from the back to get the angles right, so I ended up with a 10 inch long back leg. I added a taper to the back legs as well, just so they matched up with the look of the rest of the pieces. Now, getting a consistent placement on the back legs was a little tricky, but I came up with a method that worked pretty well. I marked the height of the legs using a square and then used a bevel gauge to get the placement consistent. This angle doesn't really matter since the legs will be trimmed in the next step. The key is to make the placement consistent, so just make sure to reference the same edge when installing both of the back legs. In my case, this reference edge was the bottom of the side of the chair. To trim the legs so that they'd sit flat, I used this little trick Basically, I put the chair on a flat surface, propped up the front legs so the chair leaned back at the angle I wanted, then I used a flat block of wood, a scrap piece of hard maple in this case, to mark a straight line on all the legs. With the lines marked, I just followed the lines with a jigsaw to cut the angles on each of the legs. And while the chairs were propped up on the bench, I chamfered the bottom edges of the legs so they won't splinter if they're dragged across the ground. As you can see, you end up with basically a dead flat chair, assuming the floor is flat, which my garage floor isn't. The last piece to attach to the chair was another support bracket, this time under the back of the armrest. This was attached the same way as the other brackets, using a few pocket screws. Before applying finish, I sanded all the surfaces of the chair up to 180 grit and broke all of the sharp edges. For the finish, I used General Finish's Exterior 450, which is a water-based exterior finish, and sprayed it on with the Rockler HVLP sprayer. 
I was really impressed with this little sprayer. If you've wanted to try HVLP and don't have the budget for a super expensive sprayer, I definitely think this is a great option. Also, one thing I didn't mention in this video was what to do with the bottom of the chair legs. You've got a few options. You can seal the ingrain with epoxy before applying finish. Uh, what I'm gonna try is adding some UHMW, ultra high molecular weight plastic, which is the same as those cheap cutting boards you can buy at any dollar store. And I'm gonna cut the pieces to fit the bottom of the legs and then just screw them on, and that'll provide a barrier between the legs and the ground. Once the finish was applied, the chairs were done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'm really happy with the way this came out. I was kind of struggling on whether I wanted to clear coat it or paint it, and I'm really glad I went with the clear finish. I think this Cypress looks really great. Uh, again, I do have plans available for this. They are listed in the video description below, and I will include some kind of alternative methods in case you're not comfortable with things like the half lap and the dados and that kind of stuff, just to simplify this project a bit. Uh, I think outdoor furniture is a great place to start as a woodworker. Actually, the first piece of furniture I built in this house was some Adirondack chairs that I already have. So great place to get started. Outdoor furniture is a little bit more forgiving. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed. I put out new project videos like this every Tuesday. Also, I have a list of all the materials and tools I use in the video description below. And last, I wanna say a huge shout out to all my patrons. I'll have a list of all my $10 and up Patreon supporters at the bottom of the screen. You guys are awesome. Thanks again for watching guys, and until next time, happy building.